Hello and welcome to Local Edition. I'm Leslie Layton. What would it be like to have never held public office and then to take those idealistic expectations and have them tempered by the reality of the job? Well, let's check in now with freshman Assemblyman Eric Linder to uh, find out what his experience has been like so far. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for having me, Leslie. So first time into office, and there you are up in Sacramento, and uh, you must be seeing things a little differently than you did before you had the job. Maybe the good, the bad, and the ugly. What's good going on up there? Sure, I think that there's a lot of reason to be optimistic right now. Um, if you were to wake up the uh, the morning after election day, after the Republicans had uh, had just lost a lot of seats and now are considered in the super minority, you would have thought the uh, the sky was falling and and that maybe. Um, California, it was going to be harder for California to recover economically. And the fact of the matter is, is that I think that there's a lot of optimism uh, in the fact that, yes, Republicans have united and, and have stayed strong, um, but we were able to defeat 32, I'm sorry, 31 of 32 what they call job killer bills. These are bills that would have been really, really bad for California's economy. It would have made it harder for employers to, to employ more people or pay people better. Um, and we were able to, to... So if you didn't have the majority, how were you able to do that? Well, the Republicans united, but we were able to cre create a new conversation in, in, in the Capitol. And, um, we, and the Democrats are, are now listening. So I think that's where we've had a huge victory. And, and you know, killing these 31 bills is, is proof of that. Okay, so optimism still prevails, but you are probably seeing some cracks here and there. Sure. In the bad, what? There's a lot of cause for concern, and that's uh, in the fact that these bills were even introduced in the first place. Um, what I like to say is, is that business as usual in Sacramento is bad for business in California. And business as usual in Sacramento is always higher taxes, uh, increased spending, and more regulations on business. And that, quite frankly, is just not good for California. So there's still a lot of talk. That's still the, no the knee-jerk response from the majority is, is, uh, is those the, those three things: higher taxes, higher spending, and and uh, increase on regulation. I can imagine that there's a lot of frustration on your part too when you see that you have ideas but you can't really put them into effect because it, when it gets right down to it, you just have one vote, one vote on the bills that come up, uh, one vote on the bills you even co-author. You uh, did co-author a bill that it didn't uh, make its way out of the. Um, the discussion phase. Sure, I, I, uh, I was actually the author of a bill um, and what this bill would have done is it would have taken sex offenders that are out on parole mm -hmm. and if they violated that parole it would have sent them back to prison instead mm -hmm. of our local jails and um, this bill it was voted down on a, a party line basis um, but but the fact of the matter is crime is right is raising in the region it's raising in, it's rising in California so we have a real problem with with crime here so I'm not done with that I, I really do believe that this is just the beginning of this fight and uh, it's a fight that will continue well this is a bill you say you had a public consensus you felt that people really supported this bill sex offenders who violate uh, parole go back to jail why do you think it was shot down you know, it, it, the fact of the matter is I don't think that it was because people wanted to defend criminals or anything like that. I think the system's broken. Mm -hmm. I think that there's a lot of special interests out there that throw their weight around, and, and that's the problem. I ran on bringing common sense to Sacramento, and, and that's my goal. And even though this was defeated, I still think that, that there's a means for, for becoming victorious in this here. It's, it's, a, it's a big battle. but. Um, but even on this bill, I'm wondering, um, isn't that what parole is all about? If you violate parole, you go back to jail? What was the hitch in this get along on that one? The, the hitch was that it, in AB 109, which is the realignment, realignment plan that, mm -hmm. that shifts mm -hmm. some of the burden from the state onto the local agencies, um, that's the big hiccup is, is I think that legislators are, are concerned that this might go against what the original realignment plan was. And that's not the case. This was a small little tweak. Um, it was a tweak that I'm, I'm confident the governor, it was his plan, I'm confident he would have signed it. And you're going to bring it up again in time to come. I Absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us.